it is cold out this morning and we're going to of course wash down the floors in here I took all the boards out there's a lot of dirt and sand still down in there and I want to get rid of it and we've already torn up our countertops so we'll uh, go ahead and sand them down and put a fresh coat of paint on those our bilge pumps are now installed so what we wash it down at least we won't have to bucket the water out of here and this is Mark Galloway he made the mistake of showing up today so yes sir Good cold to be day here. cold day for Mark <laughs> We bought the right stuff. It says 50% less scrubbing. There it goes. Every once in a while these pumps start, but they don't start pumping. And when they do pump, they pump great. <laughs> all right, I kept on getting water just filling up down there and I couldn't figure out where the hell is all the water coming from? Well, it turns out that bilge pump down there, I forgot to put a check valve on it. So when one of these other pumps kicks on, it just sends the water back around underneath the engine. So now I know. So nobody tell no one. Yeah, it's just, just between you and me. I didn't do that stupid thing. There it goes. Okay, that is a one-way check valve, and that'll stop the water from going back. And we got some work out on Mark here. It was yeah, nice. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It's you can sometimes pick up work for just a half day if you're passing through, but let me know and I always have the right to say, no, I'm doing something that's gonna be interfering. But lovely to have Mark stop by today because nearly anybody can scrub and use a hose. What you don't know about Mark is he is the king of crawdads. Yes, sir. Yeah, he will boil you up a bunch of them. Where's your what's Come your on place? down to Mont Alba and get you some. Mont Alba, Texas. There you go. BR549 like E Hall. <laughs> We'll use that dry out and we'll touch up the paint tomorrow. Oh, right. Yeah, you can reach them. That's fine. And joining us today is Lucas from. Uh, hey, where are you from, Lucas? From Austin. Austin, Texas. We have to touch up the paint on the worst spot in the boat where I got some rust. Right down there in front of the engine, in the very bottom, underneath those pipes. the seal but we're gonna paint them anyway because it's just staying left right as usual many thanks to our friends down at single source industrial coatings here in Tulsa I went and saw Blake today and they have glue I made a video on glue a while back but man you want some industrial glue go see single source industrial coatings they have 3m stuff that's any kind of cure time you want any type of you know you're doing a, a, a fabrication or you're doing a repair is it structural or is it got to be pretty well the race is a good person the religion doesn't have to stick for that to work <laughs> i forgot that the paint blake gave me originally to paint this room is a different color gray Damn, if that doesn't look cool on the door. So we're gonna paint everything except the door and leave that handle. We'll go over to this lighter pearl gray. Finish it tomorrow. Oh, missed the sunset. It was a beautifully warm day. This is the attachment that went into the Hunterstead. I'm not really sure what to call it. It had a piece of soft copper in it, but I've threaded mine out because I like that connection a lot better. See, it had a nut that goes over it that uh, holds it on. So I'm going to use the, uh, the mating surface here as it was before, but I'm threading it because that soft copper pipe in there was all twisted up and janky, and I don't want that to happen again. I think that'll work. So what it is, it's a uh, heat exchanger. So water flows to the back and then down the outside in one and out the other. And I'm not using these threads because this is all metric here. We're getting it 
changed over. You can buy adapters for this sort of thing, but they're expensive. If you don't already know, this piece of equipment is our Hundersted variable pitch control system. It basically is a hydraulic piston that spins with the rotation of the drive shaft. And inside the drive shaft, there's another shaft that moves in and out and that changes the uh, orientation of our blades. So we sail with the blades not catching much water and then we can pitch them hydraulically over so that we can be really good at towing heavy loads and that sort of thing. And yeah, they're, they're nice enough to give us a jam nut on there so we can just pick any angle we want and tighten it up. Now the disadvantage of hard pipe that if we accidentally put a lot of pressure on this it's going to snap that off, but the advantage is I can just unthread it and put another part back in. If you want to know more about this gadget, I got an old video of rebuilding it because this has the thrust bearings and everything in it. In other words, the uh, propeller shaft, of course, pushes or pulls depending on if it's on forward or reverse, but there's big bearings in here that take that force in and out. And that's one of the reasons why we can get by with using a standard Allison 545 transmission because the Allison transmission wouldn't know what to do with thrust forces. I put a 90 in here because I got to jog around my frame a little bit. And pipe dope just goes everywhere, doesn't it? If I drop it on them, I'm going to break them, so I'm going to try not to drop it on them. Ah, fuck it. There you go. Ah, yeah. I forgot to seal those up. This intercooler is strange. They got national pipe thread for the fluid inlets, but the mounting holes are metric. Well, they were a little while ago. Now they're 3 8 inch standards. I was just going to weld them in, but I've decided they're going to work better off to hold these brackets for me to guide this coolant line back to where it needs to go. I got a brass fitting in here right now, but that makes me a little nervous. Brass and aluminum are way apart from each other on the galvanic scale, so I got an aluminum one on the way to replace that with. I had to send my first couplers back because they were for plumbing, and I should have known that. Because uh, uh, PVC pipe, you know, when it's three inches, the ID is not three inches, it's much bigger than that because. They can have heavy wool or schedule 40. They change the inside diameter all the time. These are actually three inch ID inside diameter, so they fit. They were only nine bucks on Amazon, just a couple pieces of silicone rubber pipe. They're gonna work great. Shorten down this oil fill. I need parts to finish the coolant lines. And it's Sunday. Worse than that, it's the week of Christmas. So, you know, I'm not getting any shipments this week. Yeah, that's it. That's an Oklahoma snow. Beautiful. More than we've gotten in years. That's a clever idea. They have this pipe stick down into the one that comes up from the engine. That way no oil seeps around that hose. Well, I got my old 45 degree turn off with the torch, but I also warped it, so I went out and got a new one. Well, inch and three quarter pipe nipples are more rare than hen's teeth, but fortunately a inch and a half pipe has an OD that's just about right. Might be a little hard to get the hose on there, in fact. And I keep telling people that the talent and skills I want to see on my boat are the talent and skills required to make do with what you got available, not whine about what you can't afford, what you can't have, the tools you don't have, and so forth. Oh yeah. Uh, you know what, if I put some soap on there it would go. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's slick. Well, another plumbing task to put a sight gauge on this tank. Originally it was going to be turned differently in here, so I'm wrapping the pipe around from the back. But that's not a problem. What we're going to do is put that glass 
tube right here so it's a little sheltered by this uh, hydraulic accumulator here. I want easy access but not so much that you can whack it with a tool and break it. That's what the valves are for though. If you do break the side glass, you can shut off the valves, stop it from blowing fuel all over the engine. Mail arrived and I got one of my aluminum fittings. Now for the fuel lines, I'm going to use these push-on or easy lock. They go by different brand names, uh, but they have these big uh, barbs on them, fittings. And uh, all you do is you just press them into the hose. And you got to get the right hose, but they have several knockoffs out there too. So, you know, one that doesn't say it's a press-on hose will actually work. And I really ought to put some soap on that to make that go in easier. And then I'm going to use uh, a fitting that's a, actually a hydraulic fitting on the other side. And I'll screw this into my uh, uh, copper pipe over there. And if you really want to get technical and, and you're paranoid about you know all the safety things on boats, you don't use soldered copper pipe and you don't use any uh, hose that can burn because that that could give a fire access to a whole lot more fuel. Uh, I'm not that paranoid of a person and I got smoke detectors and I believe in putting a fire out before it gets going. But what that gives me is a, uh, is a connector and it swivel there so it turns without the barb spinning. So you can unthread it and uh, you got a nice JIC uh, fitting there. And that makes the hoses interchangeable so it's easy to rebuild another hose or use a hose that you got hanging around. Yeah, I got it all the way in. Now you can always spend more money on something that's you know better or safer, but the worst thing is I think too many people just don't even try or start or begin on something because they think they don't have enough money. Hell, if I didn't have enough money to find this fitting, I'd just run a PVC hose from here to there. You know, the thing is, you're never gonna have enough money to make the people who are cowards to do something like this feel better, okay? Because they're not. They're not ever gonna feel better about it. Yeah, it's nice that the school bus was already using JIC fittings too. That's helpful. Keep it away from the exhaust. Well, I'm ready to install the side glass, but that's not going to happen until I have that hydraulic accumulator tank in there. Otherwise, I'm sure to break it. And that's not our primary fuel tank. That's called a day tank. That tank there holds uh, 86 gallons. And the pumps will lift fuel from the main tanks through the filter so it gets cleaned on the way into here. Then diesel engines have return lines. In other words, they have a pump that pumps fuel to the injectors. And what the injectors don't use goes back to the tank through the return line. The return lines will return into the day tank. And then we'll mark off the sight glass and gallons so that you can see how much you've used during a particular period. And when you fill it back up, you just got to note how much you put back in. All the fuel comes from tanks that are out underneath the floor out there. There may be 800 gallons out there. There may be less, more. I don't know anymore. But we're a sailboat anyway. Now the next job is to uh, plumb this pump in here. It's uh, hydraulically powered from that motor on the back there. Uh, the hydraulic lines come later, but I need to get the water lines done for it there. And this pump has two things that it takes care of. One is it can draw water from the sea chest, which is outside the boat, bring that in and then shove it up this pipe. We can wash down stuff on the deck. You know, stuff comes out of the ocean, muddy or sandy, and we don't want to bring it over to the cargo hold. And the other job is we need to divert where it sucks from and let it draw from the bilge in here. So if we have a lot of flooding in here, like, you know, we lose the seal on the prop shaft, then it can help pump the water out of this compartment. So this big valve here comes off the sea chest and it can be closed if needed to shut off, but that's the on position there. You know, try as you will to not get this on you, but you will get this on you and everything else. And this is a three-way ball valve. The way it works is this is where the pump connects or the inlet. You could push fluid in here and it would come out this side or this side. We're drawing so it's going to suck in from this side or this side. It's got a ball in there but the ball, ball you see has a channel in it. So you just move that channel over to the other side and now draws from here into the pump here. God, when it's backwards to me it's always hard for me to figure it out. So this thing needs to turn that way so this has to go this way. Now I gotta get there. Can I go one more time around? I think we can. Alright, okay, that doesn't go there. That goes here because we gotta get from here to here. And the cleverest way I've seen to do that is with a big offset. 
Now the handle has open and closed printed on it. This valve doesn't actually have a close, but they give you a little consolation sticker. It says it's drawing from there right now. This should be easy. It's get, get sloppy seconds. Yeah. No, I think that'll work. So on the bottom side, it's just a 90 with barbs on both sides. And I may need to shorten the bars down. Oh yeah, there's no way that's gonna fit. Yeah, what a beautiful sunrise this morning. And say goodbye to the snow, it's gonna be 50 something tomorrow. Put some soap on it, but I may need to put some heat on it too. Oh yeah, that makes all the difference in the world. There's a whole bunch of steel right there around the band, but it's uh Yeah, let me get a grinder. Nick Richard just back with us. He's passing through the area, so yeah, we're cutting up a tire. <laughs> So down there is the mount for their aft end of the transmission. Did it line up? No, it needs to be shifted a little bit, doesn't it? Probably. Did you put Never Seize on? Yes, it did. Oh, good for you. Okay, heaters are very important today. We just got through fixing the welder. Again, now a heater. We gotta keep the puppies warm, don't we? That's right. Oh, that is a thermostat. Or that stupid little switch there, because I bang it and every once in a while it turns on that. This is an anti, uh, you know, I fell over switch. Yeah. So just wire around it, just connect that to that. I got a wire nut you can use. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. It's this stupid thing. It turns the, the heater off if it falls over on its face for everybody to know that already. So we're gonna bypass it. Working. Working. Awesome. Oh, yeah, that's tight enough. I'm going to put it back on the bottom side a lot. We didn't make it any bigger. <laughs> it's so damn cold, but doesn't want to bend. Okay, there's our grate down there underneath the engine and comes right up to our three-way valve. And the grate is important because there's actually a good story out there of the ship called Bounty, the recreation of the uh, original Bounty in order to make the movie. It sank. They had a uh, bilge pump. Uh, that they uh, kept having to unclog because of crap in their bilge was floating back and jamming up the intake on the pump. Not a big enough screen and too uh, untidy in the bilge. They also had a trash pump on board but they couldn't get it working. Which is a good reminder that you need to use all of your emergency equipment occasionally just to make sure it's working. And that's it for now. Thanks to uh, Nick from Renegade Sailing. Go check out his channel. He has a sailboat too. And when he's not driving a truck and welding for me. That was his first time aluminum welding. Don't, don't think that you can't do this. If Nick can do it, yeah, you can do it too. Nice cold December night, but it's gonna be warmer tomorrow. So if you're one of those people out there making stuff, remember to send us your photos. What did you make today?
Yeah.